Thanks to the extreme lack of space I'm facing, today's unboxing venue is a copy of the Art of Electronics that lies perpetually on my bed. The logo on the package looks familiar, doesn't it? And inside are a lot more things than what I was expecting. Everything here was sent to me for review, completely free of charge by Upside Down Labs, a promising Indian startup based in Delhi. The star of today's show is the BioAmp PXG pill, a super tiny biopotential amplifier, more on that later. Included is a visiting card. I haven't seen one since I was like 10. Three probes, some alligator clips and wires, a redundant paper containing a QR code that is a link to their GitHub repository, something that looks like a sticker. Good thing my fingernails have been uncut for two weeks. Oh, it is a sticker. And at last, the BioAmp pill itself. It's much, much smaller than I expected. Ooh, dark mode PCBs. I know someone who will like that. Enough messing around. Time to get to the review. The BioAmp PXT pill is a tiny little PCB and on board is a very clever circuit that consists of the power supply stuff, a buffered reference that sits halfway between the supply rails, an inverting op-amp amplifier with a gain of 1000 that has some capacitors added to provide filtering functionality which makes this a simple bandpass filter, and a 2 op-amp instrumentation amplifier that would make more sense drawn this way and even more sense simplified. For such a simple circuit, the things this board can do are remarkable. EMG, ECG, EOG and EEG, a truly EXG amplifier. Araba band from New Delhi. Talk about souvenirs. Three lengths of wire. I have a feeling this is going to turn into a I paid for the whole wire, I'm using the whole wire situation except that I haven't paid for these. Three very medical looking probes filled with some kind of jelly. Maybe it's time to start up that slime business again. Soldering the wires and headers to the board is the perfect opportunity to test how well 4K looks with the wide angle lens. These alligator clips have some kind of coating on them that makes soldering hard. Nothing a little scratching won't fix. The board itself has built-in strain relief, a nice feature that is so rare these days. Overall, I would say that I did a pretty good job soldering. Before we take a look at the Arduino waveforms, it would be helpful to do a little probing, since I think no one has really used an oscilloscope on this before. With the inputs floating, the output oscillates between the supply rails, something to be expected for an amplifier with a gain this high. With a high enough sample rate, the Arduino serial plotter does a good job of recreating the output waveforms. To make these oscillations go away, I could short the inputs together and then to the reference, which puts the output cleanly at half the supply voltage. I'm no medical expert, but going by the infographic on the GitHub page, this is where the electrodes are supposed to go. After hooking everything up, for the first time in my life, I can see on the oscilloscope what my muscles are doing. Touching the grounded case of my power supply does not seem to make a big difference. The output is also conveniently centered around half the supply voltage. It does look like there is a difference in the waveform when I move each finger, I can see where that would come in handy. Even my classic thumbs up is properly amplified. Without the driven reference, the waveforms don't make much sense. These electrodes are held in place using adhesive, making removal quite painful. This time I'm going to try the classic ECG and with the electrodes correctly placed and the camera correctly set up, I can look at the signals from my heart. I tried holding my breath which seemed to slow it down and breathing fast seemed to speed it up. We haven't yet explored the full capabilities of this board. Even without sticking those probes near my precious eyebrows or my lack of hair, there are still things this board can do. The backside for example has some unpopulated footprints and jumpers that we can play around with. I was told that the ECG readings from last time were a little noisy, so we shot this jumper to lower the upper cutoff frequency of the bandpass filter and in a side-by-side -side comparison, unfortunately, the noise has not decreased at all, instead the signal took a dip. I did some of my classic touching and anything grounded reduced the noise by a lot and that made me initially suspect that it had something to do with PSRR. But adding a 100 microfarad 100 ohm filter did nothing to solve the problem, so I focused my attention on the 1K resistor on the output of the reference amp, which made the DRL node high impedance and therefore prone to noise. Shorting that with a pin tail removed the noise completely. Not even touching could make the noise less. 
Shorting the filter jumper now just made the signal smaller again. The next jumper we are going to short connects the DRL node to the inputs through 1M resistors to make a 2 wire reading. And as promised, there is a lot of noise compared to when the DRL electrode is connected. Adding a resistor to this footprint is supposed to increase gain and using the 1K resistor I took out of the ref amp, the gain should double, which it does, dramatically so. The last remaining golden footprints are for additional filtering and decreasing the filter amp gain, but I don't really see the need to test that. One interesting point to note is that the op amp used, the TLO84, has a rather significant input common mode range limitation, and I'm only bringing this up because I've complained about it a lot and it would be a shame to not do so here too. The only effect that this has on the board is that it won't really work below 5V supply voltage since that puts the reference at 2.5V, a hair's width away from trouble. With that, I'm done tinkering with this board and I will leave with some suggestions and my opinion. I don't really see the need of band limiting since it only seems to affect the signal rather than the noise. The same thing can be said about the gain adjustment, it's not really necessary since the output signals take up nearly all of the supply range. The 2-wire mode seems rather redundant to me. Why would you want a feature that makes the performance worse? And of course, eat the refamp resistor to get rid of the noise, or at least make it very small value like 1 or 10 ohms. With that being said, the BioAmp PXG PEL is a remarkable little board. I came across it while researching EMG amplifiers for a little job I was doing, and the design I used needed expensive and hard to get parts, but the EXG PEL does the same job using jelly bean parts, and the form factor is something to die for. I really enjoyed playing around with this board and thank you once again to Upside Down Labs.